Yo, what's up everybody? We are back again here on Chess.com's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to rock your socks again with some more basic chess videos for those just learning how to become chess players, so very beginning chess players or people still out there on the internet searching for, for good instructional videos on the basic rules and concepts to play the game. We, we've done other videos in this playlist here. You can see on how, how to move some of the pieces on really basic levels, what the basic strategical ideas are. Um, you might associate it with the different pieces, uh, as well as some other things. And one of the most recent ones we did was just the basic video on how to set up a chessboard. So again, if you're a beginning chess player who's looking for information like that to help you learn this, this great game of kings that it is, then you have come to the right place. If you are uh, an advanced player, then you are in the wrong place and you need to search our YouTube playlist or go become a member on chess.com and, and enjoy our uh, videos on uh, more advanced concepts to the game of kings. So let's go ahead and jump right in here with the title concept of, of what this video is all about, which is chess notation. Now, chess notation has evolved throughout the years uh, and um, it has changed uh, most notably, the, the transition from descriptive notation was the uh, old, old-time, uh, more classical uh, way they kept track. And sometimes when you watch movies or see different chess clips, it sounds like more of a cool way to talk about a chessboard. So sometimes you'll still hear descriptive notation used to describe chess moves or particular positions, and we'll talk about that. But the most common term um, terms used to describe notation these days and the, uh, the, no the notation that is generally accepted worldwide in all chess uh, media outlets and magazines and, and uh, the most PGM, which is the term used for portable game notation, which is when you search for chess games on the internet, you'll see that term PGN used, which is um, a file transfer of chess games that have been played. Um, and all those different sources of chess moves, you will see that uh, algebraic notation is the most commonly used one, and we're going to talk about that one first before we get into descriptive. Essentially, you see there are letters and numbers on each chessboard. Um, and in this case, we have letters lined up here at the bottom on our board that we're using here. You see letters here, starting with the A, the A uh, letter. Then we have B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, right? Combine that with the numbers you see on the left side of the chessboard. And you'll see that essentially, the board, the chessboard, and all the 64 squares therein can line up, can line itself up as a graph. When using the letters and numbers, we can give each square a particular name. For example, if I highlight a square, what square is that? Well, you might say 4E or E4, depending on whether you say the letter or number first. In general, in chess terms, we tend to say the letter first and then the number. Obviously, if you said 4E or 6F or 7C, um, someone would quickly be able to look at the algebraic notation and figure out what you were talking about. But the correct terminology we use in, in, in uh, describing chess boards is always with the letter first. Okay, so this is G5. Here we see C4. Okay, you get the concept. So uh, obviously you can back it up and understand it, but there really isn't much else to talk about in terms of how to use the algebraic coordinates located on just about every chessboard you see these days and uh, the, the algebraic coordinates are designed to help you quickly know and write down and notate what move you just played. In a chess tournament, for those of you who are younger players and would like to play an over the board tournament someday or even if you're just a player learning the game and you do plan on eventually um, playing in chess tournaments, you will need to know how to keep chess notation and chess notation is based on using these algebraic coordinates. So again, C2, E5, G7, D7, F2, B5. Again, you see each time we're using the letters and the numbers to describe a particular square. In chess, we use the first letter of each piece to describe the piece. Now, typically the pawns, we don't even use a P to describe it. Typically, if you move a pawn, this move would be notated in algebraic notation as simply E4, as you can see here. This move would be notated as simply D6. But once again, if you wanted to use the letters, if you wanted to use letters like P um, or uh, uh, to, to describe a pawn, a capital P or a small p, you could do that. And of course, no one would confuse it because there are no other pieces that start with a P. But in general, as I said, we don't use the um, first letter of, of the pawn. We don't use a P to describe it. You can simply say the pawn itself. So the pieces are obviously 
You're going to have an R for Rook. You're going to have an N for Knight, actually. That one's the one that's not so obvious as the K, the King being the leader of this army. So he's already sort of reserved the letter K as far as chess terms go. But some players will actually use KN for Knight. Um, those who want to be more classical or just think they're really cute because they use more letters than the rest of us, like they're more intellectually superior. But anyway, um, some people will use the KN for the Knight. But in chess algebraic notation, we use an R for the Rook. We use an N for the knight. Guess what letter we use for the bishop? We use a Q for the queen. And we use the K for the king. So, right now we would see the king is on F4, queen on E4, bishop on D4, rook on, uh, sorry, knight on C4, rook on B4. So all those, all those things should be pretty easy for you to understand. All those concepts are pretty simple. We use the letters and numbers to describe squares. We use the first letter of each piece to describe a piece. So if you were to write algebraic notation, this move here, move one of a chess game, knight to f3, how would you do it? That's right, just like that would be good enough. And again, you could also use kn, but the n is good enough. That would be the way you would describe knight to f3. So the only other things to really review here, as far as learning the basics of algebraic notation, or what to write down for, for um, other moves, uh, let's say special moves in chess. The first special move to talk about might be the special move of castling. Castling is something that's described in one of the videos here on in this Learn Chess playlist here on our chess.com YouTube channel. Um, and that is the, the, the move where you can move the king two squares and the white rook, the rook that it was on its original square having not moved yet, will immediately follow. Again, this is not um, a video to describe the rules of castling, so if you don't understand that, you can go check it out. Um, International Master David Proust describes it well. But castling is written down in chess as O-O, 0-0, O-O, however you want to say it. Okay, And uh, if you were to castle long, that would be written O-O-O. Again, if you want to see more examples of castling short and long, you can check out David Pruis's video on uh, how to castle long and short. Another special move that you should be aware of how to notate might be the move en passant. Now again, if you understand en passant, then you probably watch David's video or you're an experienced chess player. If you don't, then uh, go ahead and check out his video on what en passant is. It's French for in passing. Okay, en passant, and, and that is described, um, sorry, en passant is used when a pawn from its original square tries to move two moves past your own pawn that has been extended to the fifth rank in White's case, or the fourth rank in Blatt's case. En passant, you can capture the pawn as if it's only moved one, and in that case, you would write the square, you would not write h, x, g, 5 being the square that it was on, you would actually write h takes g, 6 and write the uh, the rank in which the pawn ends on, not the pawn in which you've captured. So here you would be capturing and writing h takes g6. Speaking of takes, I realize that I haven't actually described two symbols that we use in chess to describe two very common things. Uh, and that is to capture, we use a letter x, a small letter x. This is how it would look if you take a good look at it. And when we give check, Let's say that uh, here we might make a move like bishop takes f7. Here we can see an x, bishop, capital B, x, f7. And you see the symbol we use for check is a plus sign. In chess, we use the plus sign to describe check, the small x to describe a capture. And other than that, we're simply using the algebraic coordinates to describe the squares that our pieces are moving to and landing on. In that case, you can already see that chess notation should be pretty simple. Right, You use the first letter of each piece to describe it, and with the exception being the knight. We use the algebraic coordinates to describe what squares our pieces are, are landing on so that we can keep track of where they're going. And we use these special symbols of x and plus to describe captures and checks. When you combine that with your knowledge of how to write down castles, you're pretty much ready to keep notation in a tournament game. As promised, I will also quickly describe for you, for those who wonder and hear, probably you've heard these terms and you wonder what that is. Descriptive notation is, is, is a notation you can use without the algebraic coordinates. Let's see here. I'll take them off. So now you see we have no algebraic coordinates. And we can use this, this descriptive notation to describe the chessboard if you don't have algebraic coordinates and you don't have them memorized, or if you just want to be an old timer and, and use this chess terminology, which sounds kind of cool. We use descriptive is, is, is based on the position of the king and the queen. 
Okay, so the move that was knight to f3 would be described as knight to king's bishop 3. And you would write it just like this. You see there, n, capital K, capital B, and then 3 to the third rank up. Okay, a move like this would be described as pawn to queen 4. You see that we don't need the numbers to know that if we move four spaces ahead from the queen's original starting square, this is the square. So that would be described as capital P to capital Q4. You see how this works? Descriptive notation is not used anymore in professional chess. Um, and like I said, other than hearing terms like knight to king's bishop 3 or pawn captures king's bishop 3 or something like that, you, you wouldn't really hear it other than um, you know chess movies or something to, to, to use it to, to sound kind of fun. It's not used in modern chess literature. Um, if, if you have collector's editions of older books, books published before the 1960s, you'll probably see descriptive notation used. Um, and uh, when I was younger, I, I first started studying chess with descriptive notation because the only books that my grandfather I had were descriptive notation, and I learned chess from my grandpa when I was 10. So I first learned with descriptive notation, but quickly um, transitioned into using algebraic notation as it's obviously much more efficient, and it can be hard to keep track if, if you get into a complicated position where you're constantly saying pong to king four, pawn to king four. If, if we're using Black's term, Black's perspective, both these moves would be pawn to king four. Knight to king's bishop three, knight to queen's bishop three, bishop to queen knight five, that's the Rui Lopez, bishop to queen's knight five, right? You can see it, it gets, it's a little bit longer, not as efficient, and when the positions get more complex, it can be easy to lose track um, if you're not really an expert with descriptive notation. So um, again, use algebraic coordinates. As you, as you get better, you will have them memorized. You will always know that even if, even if the, the number eight doesn't exist right here, you'll know that if you're black and the queen is on her color and you have a right a white square on your right hand then you'll know that that square is always a8 and you won't even need you know the the letter a and the number 8 to point that out to you you'll just know that that as long as you're black and the queen is on her color and the uh, like i said the white square is on your right which means you've set up the board right then you'll just know that that square is a8 and this square is e5 and this square is b3 so um as you get better, you can memorize algebraic notation, and it's useful to do so, but you certainly need to learn how to use algebraic notation in order to be prepared in tournament for tournament play. Um, and so I hope that uh, you will take this knowledge and uh, learn how to keep notation and keep track of your own games and enjoy the process. So um, awesome, guys. I'll see you around here. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.